Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Nari Hishmat, and I'm a board certified OBGYN in the North Puget Sound area near Everett, Washington, and today I'm going to be talking to you about fetal aneuploidy or fetal chromosomal defects and how we can test and screen for these things. Uh, so imagine that we've got 46 chromosomes. These chromosomes have a tremendous amount of genetic information and an addition or a deletion in any of our chromosomes can have very profound effects. So the most common one that people are aware of and the most common chromosomal abnormality that we see a live birth from is Down syndrome. Down syndrome is three copies of trisomy 21 or chromosome number 21. That's about one in 800 of all pregnancies. Now, about one in 150 of all pregnancies have some chromosomal abnormality at birth, present. So what we're gonna talk about today is who's at risk, who should get testing, what's the testing available, and what's the difference between a screening test and a diagnostic test. Uh, now, I thought it was fitting. Today, I am in front of the Mukilteo Lighthouse. Uh, this was built in 1906 for $27,000. It is on the historic registry of places, and you can actually take tours out here during the day. Now, lighthouses have historically been used to help navigate, to help guide people for treacherous conditions as the boats were coming in, so they provided information. So that's what this video is all about, providing information, and that's what these screening tests are, information. So if you think about it, who has the option for doing some kind of screening for chromosome abnormalities? Everybody, whether it's a screening test or a diagnostic test. And the reason is, while there are specific risk factors, for instance, age, if mom is greater than 35, your risk of a chromosomal abnormality go up. So for instance, the risk of Down syndrome in somebody 35 is about one in 350. If on an ultrasound there's major structural defects, heart defects, things like that, that increases the likelihood of a chromosomal abnormality. If you've had a prior baby affected with a chromosomal abnormality, that increases your risk. But in general, the majority of people who have a baby affected uh, typically have no risk factors because that's the bulk of all pregnancies. So that's why this, these tests are available to everybody. And one of the things that comes up from patients is, well, uh, I wouldn't terminate. Should I still get the testing? And while one of the options with the testing is to choose not to continue a pregnancy, there are other reasons to get the testing. Many people choose to get the testing simply because they want information to prepare, they want reassurance, or they just need to know. So not everybody does get testing, but the option is out there for everyone to get testing. Now, one of the important things to know is what's the difference between a screening test and a diagnostic test? Now, screening tests basically assess your risk or your probability. So it's like a weather report, 50% chance of rain. Diagnostic tests is like actually going out there and seeing. You're actually getting definitive information and answers. And so we're gonna talk about what's the difference between the two and what's available. Now, in general, everybody gets an ultrasound between about 18 and 20 weeks of pregnancy. That's gonna be looking at all the anatomic structures and things like that. Now, those ultrasounds can be very accurate for many different things, but they're not perfect tests for chromosomal abnormalities. So for instance, Down syndrome can have very subtle abnormalities and sometimes 50 or 60% of the time, they can pick something up on an ultrasound, but other times they may not be able to see something abnormal. So that's why it's important if you want to explore this further to look at some of your other testing options. Now there's a screening test available in pregnancy at any trimester, so first, second, third trimester. In the first trimester, there's a test called the first trimester screen. That's an ultrasound where they can take a look at the nuchal translucency or the, the neck thickness or the fluid filled sac behind the baby's neck and that's done between 10 and 13 weeks. And they're taking a look at that, combining it with some blood work that's basically looking at a PAP A and an HCG. And with that combination, they can give you a probability or a risk score for a baby with a chromosomal abnormality. And in general, when we talk about these, we're talking about trisomy 13, 18, and 21. Uh, Patau's, Edwards, and Down syndrome. Those are the most common ones, and that's what a lot of this testing is limited to. The nice thing about that, uh, first trimester screening is it's done in the first trimester so early information to help make some decisions but it also has some independent information so for instance if that neck thickness behind the baby is elevated even in the absence of chromosomal abnormalities there's a higher risk of things like cardiac defects now the most common test that's actually done in pregnancy for a screening test right now is the quad screen and it's called the quad screen because we're looking at four different things with a blood draw done between 15 and 22 weeks and you look at those levels so basically you're just looking at an alpha fetal protein the hcg and these other two things and you you take a look and depending on where they are it's like a combination you say well this is higher risk for down syndrome or this is higher risk for this 
The nice thing about a quad screen is it's just a blood draw, so it can be done anywhere. Uh, it's done between 15 and 22 weeks, and it's relatively inexpensive. One of those blood tests that's done in there, the alpha feeder protein, also determines your risk of a neural tube defect or spina bifida. So that's probably why this is one of the most common tests that's done in pregnancy. There is a new test out there called cell-free DNA. Uh, it's become really popular. There is some controversy because it's so pricey in the cost, but imagine that cell-free DNA can be done as early as 10 weeks and also a blood draw from the mom. And you're basically looking at these fragments of floating uh, strands of DNA uh, from the baby and you can basically assess how much of that is there and that can give you a probability of a chromosomal abnormality. So the detection rate, for instance, for Down syndrome with selfie DNA is 98%. Uh, I think it's also popular because it's got the added benefit of being able to tell you gender as early as 10 weeks. Um, but we don't recommend the test just for that purpose. It really is just a screening test. But imagine the, the main point is there's these screening tests the options are gonna be different in every community based on the resources that are available. But the idea is, do you want a screening test? Do you wanna assess your risk further? Now, if a screening test comes back positive, um, we say never make a decision off of just that. So there are screening tests and there are diagnostic tests. So diagnostic tests carry some risk. So whereas those screening tests were blood tests, ultrasounds, things like that, they can't risk any harm. It's the only harm is the information they provide us. Diagnostic tests do have a risk of harm. So we have two major tests, chorionic villus sampling and amniocentesis. So chorionic villus sampling, or CVS, is a first trimester test done between 10 and 13 weeks. And there's an abdominal approach or there's a vaginal approach through the cervix where you basically sample some of the placental villi. So basically, the placenta, what you commonly think of as the afterbirth, shares the same genetic information as the baby typically because they all come from the same egg and you can sample some of those cells and you can actually get definitive results of is there an abnormality present. Now, there is a risk with it, a risk of miscarriage, about one in 450. The advantage to a chorionic villa sampling, again, first trimester and it can give you that information. Now, once you get into the second trimester, as early as around 15 weeks when the chorion and the amnion, the sac around the baby and the sac around that, have fused, you can do an amniocentesis, which is where they take a needle under ultrasound guidance and they place it in and they gather a little bit of fluid of the amniotic fluid from around the baby and they can send that in cultured for chromosomes and again get a definitive answer. Now that also carries a risk of miscarriage, anywhere from 1 in 270 to 1 in 700 depending on whose study or data you look at. The important thing to know about those diagnostic tests is those are what are going to give you a definitive answer but they do carry some risk. So we don't necessarily recommend those as initial screenings for people but if you have an abnormal screening test you know, it'd be very reasonable, that's an option for something to go on to if you need confirmation, but there is some risk associated with that. Now, um, one of the things that will come up is if somebody goes through this whole process and we do get a positive diagnostic test, they go, well, what is my baby going to be like? And for some things we can give some detailed information because there are certain abnormalities that are not compatible with life. But for many things we can't. So again, coming back to the most common thing, Down syndrome or trisomy 21, um, there can be some profound IQ deficits, they can be structural abnormalities, but we don't actually know just based on an abnormal chromosome um, what the actual uh, expression, what it's actually going to be. So there's going to be a huge variation of babies with Down syndrome. Um, and so that's something that we can sit down and we can talk about and say, this is what we found, this is what we have, this is where we're going. Um, so that's basically our information out there. You know, again, everyone is eligible for a screening test. Everyone's available for a diagnostic test. Screening tests are going to give you probability. Diagnostic tests are going to give you detailed answers, but they're going to carry some risk. You don't have to have the testing, but you can have the testing. And it's completely up to you, a personal choice based on whether you want the information and if you find the information helpful. So if this is something that you want, I'd encourage you to sit down and talk with us and, and let's kind of decide what's the appropriate test for you, what's available in your community as far as resources, and what's covered on your insurance. Um, Thanks a lot.